Well, Lehigh Valley Ghost Hunter says he has proof a famous local inn is indeed haunted. Paranormal expert Scott Wiley says he has video of the spirit inside Bethlehem's historic Sun Inn. We'll let you decide. WFMC's Jackie Ferris has the story. The freakiest thing I've ever seen in paranormal. Scott Wiley is a paranormal researcher. Last month he recorded this video at Bethlehem's historic Sun Inn. He says the black shadow on the right hand of the screen is a ghost. If you take it snapshot by snapshot, you actually see the arms, the legs, the head. You can see the whole back, everything. This isn't the first time a paranormal group has claimed to have caught something on camera. The innkeeper has quite a few stories to tell. They set up their equipment and they wanted to look at the chest and as they got in there, you heard a voice saying, we're watching you. She was one of the last people to leave the attic and said goodbye to the spirits. And when she got home, she played a recording back and got the voice of a little girl saying, don't go. Perhaps the most chilling story is about Huetta Bender. Huetta was passionate about preserving the Sun Inn and volunteered there for years. She died in 1995. Then one night, a group of researchers took this picture. In the corner window, you see what could be described as a person with white hair wearing an apron. When the group was looking through their pictures, I saw that. I said, oh, my God, I know who that is. Whenever she was in the inn, she wore her white apron. Wiley says he doesn't think the image he captured on video is Huetta and hopes to go back to the historic inn. Do a thorough investigation because I want to know who it is and what it is. The Sun Inn says that's just fine. The tales of spirits are good for its ghost hunting tours. Ever think your house might be haunted? Do things go bump in the night? Well, you may want to meet Oklahoma's real life ghost hunters. New tonight, 2 News reporter Pete Knutson tells us they say they use science to see the other side. It's almost eerie, maybe a sign. Clouds crawl across a nearly full moon as we begin a haunted journey into the dark, creaking, spooky world of the paranormal. This stuff actually happens. There is an afterlife. It goes on. It's why Jim Pace says he founded SPOOK, which stands for Sooner Paranormal of Oklahoma. He and his team of self-proclaimed ghost hunters return to this building often. It's in Sepulpa and used to house a jewelry business down in the basement until someone or something, <laughs> Jim says, chased the owner away. He <laughs> vacated in a hurry. You'll see why when you get down here. But hang on. To help us understand what we might find, Jim says he wants to tell us more about this old building with a dark history. It was built back in 1902. A speakeasy and brothel, Jim tells us. A place for prostitutes and bare-knuckle brawlers. Home of the rough-and-tumble world of roughnecks and railroad workers. You can still hear the trains running nearby. It was a railroad town. It was an oil town. A lot of rough characters. And a lot of them are right here. Down there in that basement. We're asking any spirit people, ghost people, come close to either Christine or myself. In the 30 or so times the team has returned here with their microphones and meters and cameras and recorders, Jim says they've encountered several spirits, several shadows, moving here and moving there. They say they even got to know some by name, or at least by nickname. One of them, Jim tells us, goes by Cowboy. He's a pretty scary looking dude, I'll give you that. Most of the spirits they run into upstairs, these ghost hunters say, are mostly pleasant. But as for the ones down here, down in the basement, Jim warns, watch out. The people in the basement, not always such nice folks. People have been hurt down there. They have been scratched, bruised, punched. I've had my hat taken off down there. Perhaps some say, the basement is where all those bare knucklers proved who is toughest and still don't think their brawl is over, even a century later. If you can focus on this chalkboard. Other paranormal signs, Jim says, a message on a chalkboard, which was once part of that basement jewelry business. Someone or something, he says, wrote this message. The cake is a lie. Which historically, Jim says, means the promised reward never happened, meaning somebody down here isn't very happy. And four years ago, Jim says he had his team psychic write this question on the board. What is your name? Six months later, we came back and found Matty. We didn't write it. Back upstairs, members of Jim's team keep watch on that equipment. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Get him. Oh, Stop he's moving him. slow. Those monitors and meters, 
where every picture, every frame of video, every noise is recorded. Evidence, Christine Hartzell says, of their ghostly encounters. You can sit there watching video for hours and there's nothing there, you know, for, for hours. And then all of a sudden a shadow will pop up and, and I will just about jump up. And, and jump for joy. It's evidence to show their client, members of Spook say, to prove that client isn't going crazy. Jim says they have some kind of investigation nearly every weekend. There was a female right before the traffic noise. Okay. Clients wanting to know if their home or their business is really haunted. Sometimes they find strong evidence of paranormal activity, Jim says. Other times, there are more earthly explanations. Sometimes we find that it's not an actual paranormal anything that's going on there. Sometimes it's critters under the house. Sometimes it's just people that drink too much. As for the naysayers out there, the doubters, Jim says, believe as you will. As for him and his team, there are just too many questions. They'll keep believing and investigating, they say, determined not to be scared away from their haunted journey. <laughs> Pete Knutson, 2 News works for you. Some of the darkest chapters in Tulsa history reside in the Brady Arts District. A lot of these buildings were brothels, a lot of them. The oil boom brought an era of prostitution, disease, drugs, and murder that now play a role in most of Tulsa's ghost stories. I heard a woman moaning and crying and sobbing. I started, I started going, hello, are you okay? Hello. Terry White investigates hauntings and owns Tulsa Spirit Tours, giving curious riders a chance to visit paranormal places. There's so many characters that's lived here and they're still here. Tonight we're getting a private tour, Terry says, to lower expectations, but not to rule anything out. It can definitely startle you if you, if you um, come across something that you're not familiar with, right? <laughs> Lights flickering. An odd start to our interview at the supposedly haunted hunt club. Maybe it's somebody saying hi, I don't know. The skeptic in me says it was just a coincidence, but weird nonetheless. I could have totally told you that that's a ghost and had you believing it, because the power of suggestion is very real. That's why Terry looks for evidence before believing anything. History, pictures, and recordings all help. A good example comes from a Tulsa staple. The Brady is probably one of those places that kind of creeps me out. The Brady Theater has been around for more than 100 years. Terry says during the race riots, it served as a holding cell. Several hundred men went in, not near that many came out. While history uh, plays a big role in investigations, so out. does folklore. The urban legend says that they were burned alive in the coal furnace down in the basement and their bones swept out and buried behind the bricks. With that in mind, Terry investigated. It was just me down in the basement in one of the tunnels and yeah, there's no men around. She captured this unusual recording. Listen to it one more time. Terry says it's an electronic voice phenomenon. So when you can come up with logical explanations, generally that's exactly what it is. When you can't come up with a logical explanation, that's when we get really excited. Now, I had a very weird experience here way, way, way before. Skeptics can say what they want, but Terry's tour proves one thing. Many people do believe in ghosts and continue coming back each October to try to spot one. There is a law enforcement agency here in Arizona that actually welcomes claims of the paranormal, ghosts, witchcraft, UFOs, even Bigfoot. And CBS 5's Carol Lou has the investigative reports to prove it. In a story you'll see only on CBS 5. Well, most police departments won't take reports like this, but about 10 years ago, some officials decided to stop the snickering and thoroughly investigate. Tonight, a retired police lieutenant spills some secrets. Hundreds of photos from strange scenes in northeastern Arizona. Dozens of documents reporting unusual and unexplained activity. These are the investigative reports shared exclusively with CBS 5 News by the Navajo Rangers. The Navajo Nation Rangers are a federal law enforcement uh, resource uh, outfit on the reservation. John Dover spent 31 years in police work. The last 10 included claims of the paranormal. Haunted locations and uh, things, you know, going bump in the night, uh, objects appearing out of the air and dropping onto the floors, uh, objects flying across rooms, uh, ceramic vessels exploding, uh, and then we got involved in UFO investigations. In one of the most solid cases, 
Just last month, a mother and daughter describe a mass of lights floating over uninhabited reservation land. The lights blinked out after a few seconds, followed by a sonic boom, a black domed craft, and the entire town of Chinle losing power. And then there's Bigfoot, often associated with this film taken 40 years ago in the Pacific Northwest. Both Apache and Navajo tribes say they too have Sasquatch. One case Dover investigated had 30 witnesses. We came out with physical evidence, hair samples, uh, footprints, uh, stride, stride distances, uh, logs that had been pulled out of the, 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 the bog area uh, and removed uh, that you know normal people wouldn't have been able to do. Here in Arizona, so-called paranormal activity is abundant, but serious investigation is not. Just ask Jim Mann, state director of the research organization MUFON. It's always been the history that, uh, uh, unfortunately, the news media, okay, has sort of rolled their eyes at us and snickered at us. Mann says that's changing. UFO conferences make information widely available, and groups like the Navajo Rangers make reporting such cases more legit. We have to grow up and realize that this phenomenon is really happening. This is really happening. We have to get over the giggle factor. John Dover found out the more you look into these cases, the more you find. The confidence level is high. Uh, we've seen them ourselves on occasion. We've seen craft, uh, cigar-shaped craft lying low. Uh, we've seen orbs. Uh, you know, I had one follow me for about uh, 30 minutes one time. But in the end, it doesn't matter what he sees. It's about the witnesses. Well, their testimony would be accepted in a homicide trial. Being treated with dignity in a field so lacking in respect. Maybe we don't believe it. You know, uh, maybe we don't uh, hold every belief that you do. But we're going to investigate it uh, rather meticulously and professionally. And we're going to record it and we're going to let the chips fall where they will. The city's done wonders to clean up the park, but it does have a history. Welcome to Hummel Park, claimed to be one of Omaha's most haunted. Well, just it's, we heard it too, you know, that it's haunted, things happen here. There's a lot to be said about Hummel Park over the last 80 years, and most of it terrifying. Rumors of paranormal activity, demonic forces, and stories of modern murder. Local ghost hunters claim there is something here. Our main goal is to prove without a doubt that the paranormal does exist. Carl Norgard and Kelly Kennedy have been working to prove some of these legends true. They're a part of the local group PRISM, Paranormal Research and Investigative Studies Midwest. I believe in all of this stuff because I've had experiences. So I've already been there, done that. I want to catch it. I want to have scientific proof. Both Carl and Kelly grew up here. They've heard the stories about Hummel. I've lived here my whole life. I've heard everything from the Screaming Lady Bridge to the Hermit of Hummel Park. Um, there's all sorts of things that are said now. PRISM has investigated hundreds of paranormal claims around the Midwest. We bring uh, night vision cameras, we bring full spectrum cameras, we bring audio recorders, flashlights. And their findings have been used around the world. We actually had a private detective that got a hold of us and took us to a part here in the park where a, a young man had drove his car off the road and had died at the bottom of the hill. What they found at Lookout Point may have been more than they bargained for. It's chained off now and we heard the chains rattle and we all turned back. And it was like somebody in a, in a hood, what the wind was blowing, and the, it was really a spooky sight. Um, but it just vanished. Devil's Slide, the Hummel Park Pavilion, and the morphing stairs have all been investigated by PRISM. 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. Although no audio has been recorded there, these pictures show several streaks and floating orbs in the frame. A sign something could be with them. I'm not denying that bodies have not been found uh, in Humboldt Park at all. Absolutely. Uh, in the history of Humboldt Park, 
many people uh, have found bodies there. Omaha historian Howard Hamilton says he's read every Omaha newspaper since 1854. He dismisses most of Hummel's ghost stories. Theoretically, by the people that live in the neighborhood, they tell people to be careful along River Drive because it's a ghost. Almost 80 years old, and Hamilton is still collecting information from newspapers. He's clipped just about every obituary and walked all 32 cemeteries in Omaha. When the people were out there and they were haunted uh, by somebody, by something, it was probably a person. Hamilton can't be spooked. He debunked most of Hummel's urban legends, citing that no kind of creepy paranormal activity is on record. In the paper, it has never appeared in any of the newspapers, because I read them all. Truth or fiction, the stories about Hummel Park live on. Whether you believe is, well, up to you. The internet is a place for people from all over to share their ideas, beliefs, and various forms of media. And if you happen to be into the paranormal, the internet's a great place to join discussions and view videos documenting close encounters, including one we found from right here in western New York. Sightings of UFOs happen all the time, and with the availability of the Internet, these sightings, along with pictures and video, are easy to share and access. This video, posted on YouTube, was taken Monday night over Niagara Falls. It shows what appears to be a floating object with a strange flashing blue light. The sighting was witnessed by many at the falls that night, and this picture was taken by another eyewitness. We contacted numerous authorities in both the United States and Canada, none of which had any documented reports of a UFO or any object flying over the falls Monday night. However, this hasn't stopped enthusiasts from sharing their stories. There are countless sites dedicated to discussing and sharing UFO encounters and pictures, some of which inspire interesting debate and testimonials, while others are just purely for entertainment. For the UFO enthusiasts, there are plenty of places on the web to discuss the evidence, and if the trend holds true, the Internet will remain a haven for the supernatural, paranormal, and yes, even the straight-up bizarre things that people witness every day. But despite the ghost warning, we went back because a true ghost story needs the cover of darkness. We brought a beer for you guys. I brought some whiskey, Bill. We arrive at the house, and it was surprisingly quiet. A, first things first, though, wine, picture time. So you take you take the pictures first, and then you? Yeah, then we kind of go back and take a second. Yeah, and it's all to see if the paranormal activity appears right when the picture is taken. Okay. And sure enough, something did on me. What? Coat, it's on me? It's on you. It's no. On your back. Oh my gosh. It's on your back. What? No way. They say the ghost energy takes forms of weird shapes, like this cotton looking shaving cream thing. All right, this is kind of getting a little scary now. I believed, but our camera guy, Jeff. All right, Jeff, are you a believer now? No. So if the picture wasn't enough, maybe we just needed a sign. We haven't seen your arrow for a long time. Oh no, not the In arrow. In a couple of years. So the air that we're talking about here is another calling signal the ghosts use to show us that they are indeed here. So we go up to the hill to Whiskey Bill's grave, and yes, the ghosts were there with us. It appears from the sky out of nowhere and hits the side of Jeff's camera. Yeah. What? <gasps> the arrow! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me right now? Here we go. It's the back half of the arrow. But if that's the back, then where's the front? We go back down the hill when I hear something slice the air and hit the ground right next to me. It sounded like a stick. Oh my God. What? Oh my God. What? It's the, I think it's the arrow. Yeah, it's, the it's arrow. the arrow. Oh my God. It's the other, it's it's the the other half of the arrow. It's the other end. Oh, oh. It was the arrow, and kid you not, at one point of the evening, we heard what sounded like a big band from the 1920s playing on a gramophone. It was gonna play back. Shh! That's music! So whether it was the thing on my back, the two halves of the arrow, and the music that was perhaps too faint for our equipment to pick up, I can say that these things are enough to make a believer out of me. Covering the story, Landon Miller, Channel 2 News. Spooky spirits at the historic Holly Hotel? 
The enchanting Victorian Inn turned restaurant has been charming guests ever since 1891. But some say they can hear childlike spirits running up and down the stairs. Or a woman's image, similar to Nora Kane, whose portrait, complete with morning dress, looms in the lobby. Owner Christy Cutlenios once had an odd sighting in the main dining room. I looked up in this corner right here, and I immediately I saw an American Indian. And he was no feet, just his head and a headdress. Just floating and full. there? It was, it was startling. We had this eye contact. We looked at each other, oh and I looked away, and he was gone. When you pass through these original wooden doors into the kitchen, you are entering the realm of the Holly Hotel's most active ghosts. Plates will just fall off for no apparent reason. Utensils will move around the kitchen, including, and this is spooky, a meat cleaver. Huh. Cue the Ghostbusters and all their spirit-spotting gadgets. Many, many, many spirits. I'm not even sure how many. Members of the Michigan Paranormal Research Association shot this infrared video back in March. Do it. See the floating orb? We picked that up when we were going through the uh, evidence. It definitely kind of shocked us. And it basically is a ball of light. Some people confuse it with dust, which is understandable because a lot of times it is. Um, however, it had its own, it had its own light source. Um, it basically had a flight path because it avoided them. And it also like went into the wall because it disappears, which is interesting. That same March night, Lisa Simon felt a presence during a pendulum session. You asked a question, and what happened? What I'd asked was, uh, did the spirits, upstairs spirits, need help with the dark spirits in the basement? And the pendulum started swinging at such a fast movement arc. It was going so quickly that it hit my arm, actually, like it's doing right now, but recorrected itself. Had I let it go, it was going so fast, it would have crashed into the wall. In the comedy club room in the basement, Bridget Shipway experienced a cold spot and tried to talk with the spirit. I can feel you right here. The female's voice said, do you? It's very faint, but listen. But I feel you right here. Far-fetched or for real? You be the judge. We have an older lady that sits around. Every once in a while, somebody spots her. We get a shot of her. Now, she's not talking about people. She is talking about ghosts hanging around what some say is a real-life haunted house in Metro Detroit. Haunted houses pop up all over the place this time of year for Halloween. But some say the Orson Star House in Royal Oak is haunted all year round. 7 Action News reporter Simon Chowdhury went ghost hunting with a paranormal investigator. Is there any way that you could tell us your name? Can you tell us how old you are? And that's how one of John Tenney's investigations begin. He's a paranormal researcher seen on popular TV shows. We met with him at the Orson Star House in Royal Oak. It's been called one of the most haunted homes in our area. When you're doing some kind of paranormal investigation, you always look for a house that has a good history, something that you can track back and find out facts and evidence about. The house was built in 1845 by a farmer and cowbell maker, Orson Star. Using recording devices and other technology, investigators have learned about several ghosts through EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon. Recording now. It is very intensely strange when you run a analog or digital recorder and you know you're the only person speaking and you hear a reply. We have kids upstairs that like to play. They do not do well with men, they do better with women. We have an older lady that sits around. Every once in a while somebody spots her, we get a shot of her. Her name is Catherine from what we get from the EVPs. And we also have EVPs of a gentleman downstairs. He's a very angry little gentleman from what we understand. Candace Isaacson is on the Orson Star Homes Historical Society. She tells us the Star family lost three young children within a week in the home. We think that that's what's haunting the upstairs. We have people that claim they're touched. We have people that claim they've been pushed down the stairs. Candace says a visitor once kicked a ball down the stairs. The woman then immediately fell down the steps, claiming she was pushed, but no one was behind her. Could it have been one of the kids? They're just trying to seek out some type of communication between us, and I think that we can misinterpret that as evil or bad. We did a brief hunt using recording devices, but it seems the ghosts were pretty quiet during our visit. I get the question all the time, what's the most haunted place that I've ever been to? The, the true answer to that question is any place is haunted. The most haunted place in the whole world is the world. They're all around us, everywhere that we go.